Good morning. We're going to sing Give Me Oil in My Lamp. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp. Pray. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Everybody sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Everybody sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Yep. Thank you. All right. I'm going to have Brian open us up with prayer. All right. If you're about with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you for getting us here safely through the, the snow here in Colorado Springs. We just pray for... The, uh, the challenges and the difficulties of the technology today that we're going through that it doesn't throw us off and that we are able to still praise and worship you. We're able to still rest and fellowship well. We just thank you, God, that uh, so far we're not overwhelmed by that kind of thing. Thank you for the backup we have of Zoom and for everybody that's online and for those trying to figure out what's happening today. Just pray that you give Give them technical help or send somebody to help them to get them over to the right place. We thank you, God, for your blessings. Thank you for this week, for the challenges and, and the blessings in it. We just pray as we worship together and rest together that you are honored and glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So just so you know, our um, Michael Head Tech is uh, up in Woodland Park, and he got like seven to eight inches he sent us a picture uh said would you like to have a picnic on my back deck and it was you know it looks like 12 inches on the table so that's uh we understand him not coming down even though we made it here i think still the side roads was a struggle i had to use my four wheel drive several times uh to get here so um thankful to be here i haven't been here for two sabbaths a lot of people weren't here last sabbath so i'm glad to be here and have um our worship Let's continue uh, praising the Lord with uh, 246, Your Grace is Enough. Oh, 247, I'm dyslexic today, here having a problem. We're good. Faithfulness, O oh God of Jacob, you whistle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead me by still waters into mercy, where nothing can keep us apart. So remember your peace. Remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of heaven's victory. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. 
Number 49, forever. like to if um we've kind of been picking out wonderful songs to sing but if you have a favorite song to sing that we maybe have missed i think it would be good for you to go ahead and um you can text it in from the online people if you want to hear us sing something or um uh, give us a text or write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to jessica um heidi or myself and we'll uh, get that practiced and, and start singing that song. So um, that's my announcement. Uh, <laughs> um, anybody else have any announcements online here today? No, we're good. All right. Um, let's go into our prayer portion. Um, you're online today um, on Zoom. So if you'd like to chime in uh, your prayer requests, we'd be happy to uh, listen to them and um and pray about it so i had my um x-ray scans and my mris and i do have a bulging disc in my neck and some stenosis and um good old arthur arthritis um in my spine uh so so that's just what i'm dealing with um um so i have an answer to what i have and um it's not 
too serious, but it's just something aging. So I love getting old. And, no. uh, <laughs> I have one height. Or Heidi, sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm just so used to that. Um, I did get a new job this past week. Oh. And, um, wow. My boss is a professing Christian, which is great. He uh, likes to pray in the morning, kind of like your your work does. But uh -huh. um, he's going through a lot right now, especially uh, physically. He has um a bad shoulder he had double knee replacement and one of them was bad so he has to get that done again and then he found out he might have throat cancer Whoa. so he's in just tremendous pain everywhere and that really plays a lot on your mentality like your your emotions and everything it just i want my working there to be a blessing for him um it's already going to be a blessing for me and my family but i want i want to see god God's hand in this. And so just prayers for my boss. His name is Tim. Okay. Ted. Oh my gosh. His name Ted? Is Ted. Ted Link. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I keep calling his dog the wrong name too. <laughs> Well, uh, so I have a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lane, what you got? Uh Curse Conservator is really calling us, causing us a great deal of grief, and he won't let us get a place in Canyon City. Uh, I lost my insurance now, so is Kurt, because he has too much money to put into a home, so we don't qualify for Medicaid, so we lost our United Health Care. Mm. So we've lost over $500 a month now because of Kurt's Conservator, and he will not help us anymore with any of the money that Kurt has. So we're really, really in a bad situation. So we could use some prayers for his mm. conservator to wake up. <laughs> mm. Sorry, Lane. Um, two hours ago, Michael Charney, I praise God, I went to the cardiac catheterization angiogram yesterday good thing i know those words <laughs> as they found some blockage in my left artery on a ct scan on monday the results of this procedure indicated that there is a plaque in my artery but not excessive for my age group and that no stent is needed at this time yeah i want to thank everyone for their prayers during this time and for their mm -hmm. prayers during my prostate cancer for the last two months my radiation treatment are over and i'm beginning to not have any symptoms from those treatments. I praise and thank God that I have a church family. Every week they remember to pray for me and all this. And I want to especially thank Mike Wallace and Gabe Zaragoza for continually reaching out to me. Very good, Michael. We're yeah. happy for you too. Um, Mary Hines did an unspoken for her granddaughter, Aaliyah, last Sabbath. Um, Mary Hines, pray for her son, Alan, who's swelling and infection in his lower right leg. Doctors don't know what the cause of it is yet. So I haven't got an update on that yet. Um, so um, last, two Sabbaths ago, I talked about writing down our prayers, uh, request and praying for them over the week. Um, I know I had a little extra prayer time to pray for everybody at church. And I hope that you guys did too um to to have some answered prayers so anybody helps here have any prayer requests cj go ahead thank you somebody for seeing that <laughs> cj you're on if you unmute yourself um no i didn't have anything i don't oh, know. You have your hand raised up oh did i <laughs> God. no <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just keep your hand and praise up there. And, uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Good to hear from you. Peter. Peter's got a hand raised now. Good morning, Peter. He's just praising God, too. He's trying to be funny. We know Peter. There you are, Peter. Good morning. Good morning. I was waiting for the website. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're we're happy to be on Zoom. All right. 
Yeah. Let's uh, bow our heads and um, bring our thoughts and prayers towards the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just are so um, grateful and thankful for everything that you've given us. I'm grateful to be here and for everybody to have made it safe here and to have fellowship in your name and to meet in our wonderful, comfortable church, Lord. We um, just ask that you um, lift Jessica up in her new position and her job and, and be with Ted and um, his health issues that he has and help her to be a light, a beacon, and a blessing um, in his life, Lord. Uh, be with Lane and Kurt. We just lift them up to um, have that conservator um, do what their job is to do and um to give the money where it needs to be allocated to um, help Lane and Kurt um, get through their day-to-day -day stuff. We're just grateful that I found out what's wrong with my back, Lord, and just ask your hand of, of taking the pain away. We ask that those that have any ailments here um, that haven't been spoken for, but they know what they are, and we just ask for healing. We're grateful and thankful for uh, Michael and that he's feeling better and that we've kept up with praying for him. And um, we ask continue prayer for Merwin and um, everyone online that may have some ailments too that need to be uh, addressed and taken care of. We just ask that you be with this service today and help it to be a blessing to those that hear um, and those that are in person here and um, those that watch it in the future. We ask these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right. I am going to introduce um, Montana Mike. He's from Montana. <laughs> he's, uh, he's married to Bonnie. They have children and grandchildren. And Mike's extensive um, education and love for learning. Um so we're glad to have you, Montana Mike, and um, take it away. Go, dog, go. <laughs> That's the name of his title. That's... Oh, yeah. right. I'm going to mute us now. I got the name. Uh, by the way, I really like it I, when I can see people. It is very <laughs> difficult to give a sermon or to talk just to a computer screen. That's good, Don. Thank you. I appreciate that. So if anybody wants to turn their cameras on, that's really a good thing for a speaker. So, see, I got the book. Go, dog, go. Ta-da. <clears throat> Hope all of you remember that as a little kid. I do have a couple little things to say. Um, I'm glad Michael had something up there because uh, I do my best to bother him. I mean, stay in touch with him. As he says, I call it the most inappropriate times. Um that happens. Uh, but he's out there. He's on today. I'm so thankful that uh, I talked to him yesterday and that he turned out okay. Uh, we pray for Merwin, who we have dubbed Captain Proton, because his radiation has to do with protons. So many people and things have gone out there, and we have such a, a great church. And it's grown so much in just the last year from, you know, six five or six people in-house to what, 20 something there today, probably. Brian's counting up, I think. But it's a wonderful opportunity to be here. And we do have folks, uh, Margie Lippincott Anderson is on. Where did she go? Yep, she's still on there. Gordon and Stephanie are sitting there. We can see them, we can see Dawn and see you folks. And that's just great. Um, I do have something of great importance I kind of hinted at earlier. Brian Franks is our senior elder. And in the, the Church of God Seventh Day, as an elder, you start out with a local pastor certificate. So that's me, the bottom of bottoms, the bottom of the barrel, the scrapings. I am a I have a local pastor certificate. After that, you have a pastor's certificate. Well, Brian, as we know, is the dean of academics for the RDOs college. He has a master's degree in education. He has a master's of divinity. And 
he has allowed me the honor. Frankly, it is an honor because I really come to rely on him to announce that he is now a credentialed minister, the highest rank possible in the Church of God, Seventh Day. And I know that was a, a it's kind of an emotional couple of weeks for Brian and going through that process. And I've I've been around the Church of God since 1972. I've met few people as kind and giving and trustworthy and with biblical knowledge as Brian Franks. And I look up to him. I'm older than his father, yet he's like a son to me in many ways. And I, I could not have been happier. So Brian, congratulations. And of all people I know, you deserve that honor. So thank you for being among us and our co-elder at the Colorado Springs Church. But with that said, I have this book called Go Dog Go. I don't know if any of the kids are out there. This is kind of a cool book. My mom read it to me when I was young. So I recently went and bought a new one. I'm going to read a few pages by way of introduction to this sermon. The sermon's about discipleship, as you know. So here we go. Now it is day. The sun is up. Now is the time for all dogs to get up. Get up. It is day. Time to get going. Go, dogs, go. See, we get pictures and everything, kids. Go, dog, go. Woof, woof, yippee. There they go. Look at those dogs go in the cars, and they're going. Why are they going so fast in those cars? What are they going to do? Where are those dogs going? Look where they are going. They're all going to that big tree over there. Dogs are going to the big tree. Now the cars stop. Now all the dogs get out. Now look where those dogs are going. To the tree, to the tree. Up, up the tree, up the tree. Up they go to the top of the tree. Why? Will they work there? Will they play there? What is up there on top of that tree? There they go. Climbing the ladder to the big tree. A dog party, a big dog party. Big dogs, little dogs, red dogs, blue dogs, yellow dogs, green dogs, black dogs, white dogs are all at a dog party. What a dog party party. Thought the kids might enjoy that. My mother used to read that to me when I was young. But the point is, the dogs had a place to go. They were in a hurry. Go, dog, go. Where were they going? Why were they going? Well, let's turn over to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. We're going to get there. Today, as Christians, we are to be the disciples of Jesus Christ. We are to be Christian disciples of Jesus. So this morning, we will learn what it means to be a modern-day disciple of Jesus. We will learn what it means to be a modern-day disciple of Jesus. We have a number of sections to cover, but I want to start in Matthew chapter 28. Section 1 of the sermon is the three goes. Go, dog, go. Well, we have the three goes of Matthew 28, which involve discipleship. Now, in Matthew 28, verses 5 through 7, and by the way, if you're on our emailing list, you should have an email with the sermon notes. If you don't, put a note in chat, and I'll make sure later to get you the notes, okay? So hopefully everybody has the notes already. But Matthew 28, verses 5 through 7. The scenario is Jesus has been crucified. He's been in the tomb for three days and three nights. And Mary and the other Mary, they show up. So the Marys show up and they're mortified. He's gone. 
the guards have fallen like dead men because the angel came down. And in verse five, but the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of discipleship, folks. Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen. And as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. So they looked. Mary's looked in the tomb and Jesus is gone. Are, they're afraid. I mean, they're talking to an angel. This is quite a big deal. And then the angel says, and go quickly tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Don't be afraid. Go tell the disciples. I look at this as the original, very first Christian mission trip. The Marys are told, go tell the disciples what's going on. Go tell them. Got to do something here real quick. Hang on. There it is. Okay, better background. Go tell them. So they're on the road to go tell the disciples they're hurry and they've, they've seen Jesus is alive. And then in verse nine, it says, Jesus met them. And he says, rejoice. Okay. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Go again, go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Two goes. The angel said, go. Jesus said, go. And then we get to the very end of the book of Matthew, verses 19 and 20. What does Jesus say to his disciples, of which we are his modern day disciples? We're going to see that. He says, Jesus said, <clears throat> now, now I got to tell you, when Jesus says something, we probably ought to listen. So, go, therefore, and make disciples. We call this the Great Commission. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You've got these three goes. The Marys are at the tomb. The angel, go on the way. Jesus stops and says, go. And then Jesus to all the disciples, go to all the nations, the end of the earth. Teach them about me. That is the foundation of discipleship teaching about Jesus and going. It's the Great Commission. So this kind of brings us up to a couple questions, okay? This leads us to some obvious questions. What is a disciple? What is a disciple? And where does a disciple go? Acts chapter one. What is a disciple and where does a disciple go? We'll explore that as we go through this sermon on being a disciple. But Acts chapter one and verse eight, Jesus is talking to them again. And he begins to answer that question. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That was gonna be in a few days. The Feast of Pentecost is coming. So you're gonna receive power. And when this power comes and you, shall be witnesses to me, Jesus Christ. We preach him. Where? Where do we go? They're in Jerusalem. And he says, you go in Jerusalem, and then in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Being a disciple is about telling about Jesus and going and talking about him to the end of the entire earth. That's a big job. Acts chapter one and verse 13. This is just kind of a, a historical funny 
a fun thing here. So they're in Jerusalem on this, you know, and it says, and when they entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Here's the original disciples, the 11 that are left, and the Marys and the other people who had been following Jesus. It says, and when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer, supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. We see the brothers of Jesus have been converted. What's interesting here is six of these disciples are never mentioned in the Bible again. That's it. You never hear from them again. James, the brother of John, is killed in Acts chapter 12. We never hear of him again. So where did they go? Jesus said, go make disciples. And after this point, there's no record of six of them. They obviously went to preach Jesus and the coming kingdom of God. So the point, first point is we have the three goes, which gives us a wonderful hint about being a disciple. We learn from the master and we go teach about the master. Okay. Um, we started with go, dog, go. And for those who remember the comic strip, Calvin and Hobbes, I loved Calvin and Hobbes, that little six-year-old. He could get in trouble, and he had that stuffed tiger, Hobbes. Hobbes, in Calvin's mind, was a real tiger, okay? One day, and I recently came across this comic strip again, Calvin, in his curious mind, he was outside, and it led him to build a cardboard box. He had this cardboard box, and he made an invention, and he called it a transmogrifier transmogrifier recently i saw that so calvin and his little stuffed tiger hobbs they were outside playing and of course calvin had another harebrained idea he turned the cardboard box into this transmogrifier and he put a little dial on there and he put a little button and he put names of different things around the dial and he said hobbs hobbs i can get in this it's my new invention I'll get into the transmogrifier. You turn the dial and press a button and ta-da! I'll be whatever its name. So Calvin crawls in there. Hobbes turns the dial and presses a button. He lifts up the box and he looks in and Calvin says, I didn't want to be a lungfish, you lughead. Puts the box back down. Calvin says, try something else. Hobbes being a little tiger, Twitches, pushes the button, and Hobbes says, are you okay in there? And Calvin's, yeah, I'm great. This is great. Um, um, a little warm. I feel a little fuzzy. You got any tuna fish sandwich? Hobbes opens the box, lifts it up and looks, and out comes a mini version of Hobbes. Calvin's been turned into a mini tiger. Hobbes was really, really excited about that, having another tiger, but Calvin had been transformed in his transmogrifier into a little tiger. Well, guess what? Calvin had the idea of changing himself into something better, more fun and exciting for six-year-old or first grade. Like Calvin wanting to change himself, the concept of becoming a disciple of Jesus will begin our spiritual transformation like Calvin's transmogrifier. A transformation from sinner to saint and show, <clears throat> excuse me, show the deep need the world has for our discipleship into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ. Our Christian goal is to become like Jesus, a mini Jesus like Calvin was a mini furry tiger to Hobbes. And when we become a disciple of Jesus, we begin a spiritual transformation into the image of Jesus, okay? The word 
Transformation is a Greek word. Okay. Actually, it's two Greek words, meaning to move something from one place to another. Trans, move from one place to another. The Greek word is meta. Formation means morph, change, like Calvin did, meaning to change. Transformation, move from one place to another and be changed. And this is the foundation of our discipleship in Jesus. We change to become like him. That has to do with being a disciple. The Apostle Paul emphasized this in Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. He says, Paul, Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. So don't be like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to be transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. We need to be transformed into the image of God. So let's talk about discipleship, okay? I want to talk about discipleship a little bit. It's uh, an interesting topic. Discipleship begins when one becomes a disciple. You have to be a disciple to do discipleship. A disciple is a learner from a master. We are learning from Jesus Christ. We are transforming to his image. And if we're going to go out and do discipleship, which is what we were commanded to do, Jesus said, go make disciples in all the world. It's the Great Commission. It's our job. But if we don't have the right credentials, godly spiritual character, conversion, transformed in the image and mind of Christ, We'll go out and spread a wrong gospel. It's important to get our Bible study in our prayer. It's important to learn God's way of life. We can't properly disciple unless we are in the image of Jesus Christ. A disciple, the Greek word is mathetes, M-A-T-H-E-T-E-S simply originally meant a learner or a follower, usually someone committed to a significant master. So a disciple is a learner. It's a follower who is committed to a significant master. Guess what? Our significant master is Jesus Christ. We are to learn about Jesus. We are to follow him. A Christian disciple, therefore, is a learner and follower of Jesus. Now, once we, the disciple, once we have transformed and taken on the knowledge and character of the master, Jesus, the disciple will then go and make more disciples in the image of the master. To be a disciple, we learn from the master. We transform to become like the master. We imitate the master, and then we go and we teach what we have been taught by the master, in this case, Jesus Christ. Discipleship, then, is simply, simply means the state of being a disciple. Go make disciples. We can't be a sponge. We can't just come to church and sit and sponge. Eventually, the sponge fills, and we have to move on and teach Jesus Christ. That's what he told his disciples. We are the modern disciples of Jesus Christ. We must learn. We must study. We must get together. We must learn together, and we must follow, imitate Jesus, and become like him. Jesus outlines the meaning of disciple and making disciples is what the church does. Discipleship isn't just one of the things the church does. It is what the church does. Okay, I've got a really good book. Just finished an RDO's class on discipleship and 
evangelism. This book is called The Complete Book of Discipleship. Hope we can get it to come up or not. Nope, gotta come back here. Oh, here we go. Fake background, doesn't work. Okay, The Complete Book of Discipleship by Bill Hall. I think it was by far the best of the three books in the class. Um, Hall made that statement, discipleship isn't just one of the things the church does. It's what the church does. Discipleship is the foundation of that great commission to go. Okay. John 15 and verse 8. Let's go to John 15 and verse 8. By this, Jesus is talking on his last night of life. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. We want to please God? Bear fruit. Teach the gospel of the kingdom of God, of Jesus Christ. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. What a blessing. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ. That we learn from him. That we imitate him. And we go and we teach for him. Now, there is some historical discipleship that's worth looking into. I, I'm sure most of us have heard of Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, the the Greek philosophers who set the stage for much of the Western world, which we are a part of, and much of what they had to say is still relevant today and is still used in education and our Western philosophy. Originally in Greek, the time of Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, the word disciple simply meant a learner or a diligent student. How diligent we are we at learning? How good of a student are we? That's what disciple originally meant. By the time of Jesus, something had been added to it. The concept of adherence had been added to the definition of disciple. So by the time of Jesus, by the time of the disciples, by the time of the first century and the apostles and the early church, disciple meant a learner, and you adhere to the master. Isn't that what we're supposed to do today? Adhere to Jesus Christ? Absolutely it is. To do what he has to say. Well, discipleship is something that actually goes through the Bible. It started a long time ago. Um, Bill Hall in his book, The Complete Book of Discipleship, made a statement that I thought was pretty relevant. Okay. He said, faith that doesn't result in action isn't faith, but something else. Faith that doesn't result in action isn't faith. It's something else. I don't think we want to be part of the something else. We want to be part of God's family. James 2.26, very familiar to us. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. We have a job to do. To spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entire world. To all nations. From Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. It's the Great Commission. It is the job that Jesus gave us to do. Now, we're all parts of the body. We're different parts of the body. Some are the feet. Some are the heart. Some are the arms. Some are the eyes. Some are the nose. So we all have a different part to play. But together as one body, those of you who are in-house today in Colorado Springs, and those of us who are out here online, the outhouse crew, I call us, Okay, we're one body. We're one church. We've got over 35 people listening in today. A year ago, we were down about 15. 
disciple, learner. Imitate Jesus Christ. Follow him and go preach the gospel. Okay? Long before Plato and Aristotle, Socrates, we read that Joshua was the disciple of Moses. Moses discipled Joshua. Daniel had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Elijah had Elisha. Amazing. We see that over and over again. And in the early part of the first century, actually the last part of BC, the great and respected Jewish Pharisee Hillel, considered the greatest Jewish Pharisee of all times, okay, had a grandson by the name of Gamaliel, who was his disciple. Gamaliel was the mentor to his disciple, Saul, who later morphed, transformed, got in Calvin's little transmogrifier box, and became Paul the Apostle. We see this all the time. And one of the greatest stories of the early church was how the Apostle Barnabas, my hero, I love Barnabas and his history and all he did so humbly for the church, but he mentored Paul, and Paul later mentored Titus, Silas, and Timothy. We are truly surrounded by a great crowd of discipleship examples for our edification today. Paul, Saul, deserves a special mention because we saw his transformation from a Pharisee breathing fire, having members of the church of God thrown in jail and killed, sent from Jerusalem to Damascus. And on the way, Jesus Christ strikes him down, blinds him, and sends him to Ananias. And three days later, scales fall off his eyes, he's healed, he is baptized and becomes the greatest of all the apostles. He transformed. He was transformed for us. You can read it in Acts chapter 9. What a tremendous story of learning and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. True Jesus-worshipping disciples display common traits. Disciples will display common traits of being a disciple of Jesus. They will follow a teacher. They will memorize the teacher's words. These are common traits of a disciple. They will learn the teacher's way of ministry. They will imitate the teacher's life and character. Then the disciple will raise up disciples and repeat the entire process to spread the word of the master. A good disciple will become like his master. Jesus said, go make disciples. We are the disciples. We have a job to imitate Jesus, to become like him, and to teach others that way. You know, one of the, the greatest stories never told is how the Christian church produced so many tremendous disciples of Jesus in the last 2,000 years. I want to give some examples, some major examples of disciples over the last 2,000 years. Some of you have heard of Clement of Rome. He wrote a letter to the Corinthians, and most likely he interacted with some of the original apostles. Then we've heard of Ignatius of Antioch. He was considered a bishop of bishops. Brian today is a pastor of pastors with his promotion. It's like Ignatius was a bishop of bishops. We use pastor or elder. Brian Franks is now a pastor of pastors. That's essentially what has happened here in the last week. Polycarp of Smyrna. Some of you have heard of Polycarp. He was part of a long line of disciples who defended the faith once delivered. Jesus Christ 
had a disciple named John who wrote three epistles, Revelation and the Gospel of John. From Jesus to John, Polycarp was a disciple of John the Apostle. Polycarp had a disciple by the name of Polycrates. We have historical hard fact evidence from approximately 30 AD to almost 200 AD of Jesus to John to Polycarp to Polycrates. Jesus discipling John, discipling Polycarp, discipling Polycrates. What's amazing about Polycarp is the young man under the tutelship of John in around 155 AD, the Roman church was beginning to stray from the gospel once delivered. And the very, very elderly Polycarp, about 80 years old, goes to Rome and has a discussion with the Bishop of Rome, Anicetus, about the Lord's Passover, the Lord's Supper. Rome was starting to keep something called Easter, which is not biblical. They weren't keeping the Passover, the Lord's Supper, as John had taught Polycarp, as Jesus had taught John. And so Polycarp went to Rome and discussed it with him. Anicetus, he insisted on continuing with Easter. John, no. The Lord's Supper is the 14th day of the first month of the Hebrew calendar. Forty years later, Polycrates, the disciple of Polycarp, went to Rome and ended up being disfellowshipped from the Church of God by the Pope at that time for proclaiming the Lord's Supper on the 14th day of the first month. They held to what needed to be done. You see, a disciple will hold to what the master had to say. About a thousand years later, Brett Calder, uh, Brett, Brett Jones, if you're out there, this one's for you, buddy. About a thousand years later, Catholic Francis of Assisi is credited with making a statement. Quote, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. End quote. I used that phrase for a couple of years, not realizing where it came from. It was Francis Assisi who said that. I've used that at the end of sermons. I've used that in Bible studies. Preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. Wow. How we act as disciples is part of discipleship. In the modern day, during World War II, the German... Dietrich Bonhoeffer fled Germany in the 1930s, came to New York, went to school, wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship, convicted by his own book during World War II as a German. He went back to Germany and confronted the powers that be. Later, the Nazi government hung him for his commitment to Jesus Christ. He truly paid the ultimate price of discipleship in Jesus. The angel told the Marys, do not be afraid. Jesus told them, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It isn't always a bed of roses. I'm going to look now at what disciples look and act like. So now that we understand disciples, what do disciples look and act like? Well, Paul, in his book, The Complete Book of Discipleship, made a statement that I thought was worth repeating. He says, quote, Paul set up two primary goals of discipleship. The first, imitate Christ. So the first thing we do is imi imitate Jesus. How did he live? How did he act? What did he do? That's for us to imitate. And secondly, he said, although other disciples make for earthly and imperfect examples, imitate them, end quote. See, we don't have the perfect Jesus anymore. We have his words, but we learn from imperfect people. 
Our spiritual transformation into a disciple of Christ begins when we start to imitate Jesus. Okay? What did Peter say? Peter, in 1 Peter 2, verse 21, he said, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. We do what Jesus had to say. Philippians 2, 5, I love this verse. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Think like Jesus. Act like Jesus. It's part of being a disciple. Discipleship in Jesus, it can bring difficult times. We read that about Bonhoeffer. Polycarp was also martyred. We believe most of the original apostles were martyred, except for maybe John, and we don't have record of six of them, but it seems likely. The biblical heroes of Hebrews chapter 11, disciples, had a rough time at times. Paul, he described his sufferings. Okay, he said, well, Paul, he had, he was shipwrecked at least three times at sea. He was beaten with whips five times, 40 lashes minus one. He says he was in peril, persecuted, hated, stoned, imprisoned, and yet he was happy in his discipleship of Jesus Christ. Hard times he went through, he was happy in his discipleship. As Isaiah says in Isaiah 26, verse three, but you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. God trusts us. His mind will give us perfect peace. Don't be afraid to be a disciple of Jesus. Imitate me is what Jesus said, 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Imitate me, he said. A disciple will imitate, imitate and become like Jesus. A disciple will imitate and learn from their human master as the master follows Jesus. Paul even mentioned that. Follow me as I follow Christ. The importance of our obedience to the master cannot be overstated. Okay? <clears throat> what did Jesus say? A disciple must be obedient to the master. He or she follows. We know that. Jesus, on his last night of life, of physical life on earth, said, quote, if you love me, keep my commandments, end quote. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Then he said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Disciples, go, learn. Imitate Jesus Christ. And he spells it out. We love each other. We are kind. We are giving. We are to be like Jesus. By this, all will know that you're my disciples. So we have love for one another. We imitate Jesus. He is our personal teacher. We keep his law. And we love each other. This is what disciples look like like the foundations of being a disciple are to learn follow become like the master and then go and teach like the master it's very easy we learn we follow we become like the master we are morphed we are transformed and we go and teach like the master he said, go make disciples of all nations. You know, throughout history, the concept of discipleship where one learns from someone else has held true. Moses to Joshua, Elijah to Elisha, 
Barnabas, Paul, Silas, Timothy, Titus, John to Polycarp and Polycrates, and others show us the exciting fulfillment of discipleship. Our Christian discipleship is to take on the likeness, the image, and the mind of Christ and to be his disciple. Can we imagine a world that his disciples have gone to where every single person has the image and the likeness and the mind of Jesus Christ? There would be no crime. There would be no disease. It would be a perfect world. And we were told to do that. You know, little Calvin and his make-believe transmogrifier. I love that, transmogrifier. Big word for a kid in the first grade who didn't like math. That's Calvin. If you don't read the Calvin and Hobbes comic strips, you probably should. Unless you're a little boy, because they give you ideas. So little Calvin and his make-believe transmogrifier gave us a child's view glimpse into our transformation of being a disciple of Jesus, our Lord and Savior our transformation of becoming like Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Calvin, you know, when he comes out of that box, transmogrified out of his transmogrifier as a little furry, hungry tiger, he was greatly disappointed at his new invention. He thought this would be great. He didn't plan on being a little tiger to Hobbes the tiger. No. But guess what, folks? We, the disciples of Jesus, have his word and the power of his Holy Spirit to morph and to change into the likeness of Jesus. When we come out of our spiritual transmogrifier box, we will not be a disappointed little stuffed furry tiger. Instead, we can go forth as a tiger for Jesus, discipling the world to conform to his image. As disciples, we become like Jesus. We learn, we follow, we teach, and we go forth to create more disciples. Matthew 28, we go as the Marys were told to go. In Matthew 28, we go as the type disciples were told to go to the ends of the earth, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We go to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. We are his disciples. We are his modern disciples. Now, Go, dog, go. Go preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. And if we have to, say something. Back to you, Melissa. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right. So we did not plan a closing song, but we do have um, a closing prayer. So let's go ahead and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be like Jesus. Help us to learn and to follow and to teach and to be disciples for God. Um, help us to go out into the world and plant the seed and, and uh, keep that oil in our lamp burning, Lord, for you. Um, we are so grateful and thankful that we have that freedom to uh, go out and to talk to people and to have uh, growth and to love one another um, as Jesus has commanded us. Just keep us safe today in our drive home and um, warm when we do get home and be with those who have prepared food for today. Um, and we just ask that you be with us throughout the rest of the week. In your son's name, amen. Jesus, amen. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Actually, really nice. It's really nice to be able to see people yeah. when you're talking.
Well, I'll keep that for a sec, okay? Thank you, Mike. You can Thank see you. us. The volume's on there. You can Thank talk you. to people. All right. Thank you. Looks like a full house there today, pretty much, Melissa. Yeah, we're missing oh. Heidi and we're missing. Well, Grayson didn't sit with us. He was yeah. trying to work on the computer. Yeah. We're missing Mike just, and Diane. Yeah. And, and Michael just, Charney. And yeah, Michael Charney. Charney. Michael's right there. He can even wave at you. And, yeah. And the other two. Oh, and Jessica. Yeah. And, and Eric. Yeah. yeah. The snow, down the snow. Yeah, I think Jessica and Eric, I think Jessica might have some sickness. Oh, really? Just yeah. oh. snow. Okay. I'm just guessing. The in-laws are in town, too. The sick of snow, right? That's right. The in-laws are in. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go check some food and put the books back. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Happy You're Sabbath. welcome. Happy Sabbath. Yeah. Have a happy Sabbath. <laughs>